my gangsters! Yo guys, what's up? This is Dave, the Open Source Gangster here. So I'm gonna get right down to it. I'm gonna show you how you can build Saiyajin Mod for your device straight from source. Now, in order to do this, there are quite a few things you're gonna need. First, you're gonna need a copy of a Saiyajin Mod ROM already built for your device. And that's just so we can take the necessary device blobs and specific files from that ROM. Next, you're gonna need to have access to a computer running Mac OS X or Linux. Now you can also do this through a virtual machine, and I'll actually demonstrate this using VirtualBox, so you can use that as well. Finally, you're going to need a lot of patience, because this whole process between downloading the source and making a build can take anywhere between 8 hours to 8 days. So patience is definitely number one value here. And that's it, so let's get to it. Alright guys, now before we begin, there's a little notice I want to throw out to you. This tutorial is targeted towards more advanced users. So I'm going to assume that you're already familiar with basic Linux and Android operations and you're, you already have a Linux system or Mac OS X up and running and you're kind of familiar with how to use it. So like I said, you do need Linux or Mac OS X to, you, to do this or you can do this through VirtualBox, which I'm doing right now. I think it's easier to do it through a virtual machine, but whatever works with you. Now another thing I want to point out is there will be a lot of links I'm going to be posting in Terminal for this, like left and right, like tons of stuff we need to download. I'm going to post all the links on my webpage at opensourcegangster.com. So just head over there and I'll obviously post a link in the description. Uh, but just go in there and literally just copy and paste the links because, I mean, even to try to put on the screen and for you to copy it, that's going to be really hard. So just copy and paste it. And another side note, this tutorial is compiled from different sources. I took some information from Sajamon's Wicked page and from XA Developers. And of course, there are a thousand ways to do what I'm about to show you, but I think this is the easiest way. And just note that even though this video might be not that long, this is like a five hour process. So let's get to step one. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is add the bin folder to your bash RC file so we can use it as a path. Now, if you're asking well, what bin folder, well, we haven't created it yet, but we will in a little bit. But let's first add it as a path just to make life easier. So in terminal, type in sudo, get it that little, little squiggly thing, forward slash dash B-A-S-H-R-C, hit enter. Okay, and as you see right here, we have our bash.rc file. So at the end of it, what we want to do is go scroll all the way down, and I already added it, but you want to add in this line, export path, uh, that dollar sign, <laughs> I'm bad at all these symbols, I can't remember the actual term they mean. Um, in a bin right there. So make sure you add that just at the bottom of your bash.rc. I also have ADB set up. This is really not required for this tutorial, but I mean, if you really want to do ADB, it's not that hard to set up. Okay, so make sure you have that, save it, then go back into your terminal, and let's just reload it. Now, you can also reboot your computer to reload a bash.rc file. All right, and terminal, type in the following, and there we go, that reload a bash. And make sure you spell it right, because as you see, I kind of spelled it wrong the first time. All right, step two, preparing our build environment. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna have to download a lot of uh, just software development stuff. So the software uh, JDK and also some libraries. So like I said, I'll have all this available on my webpage where you just copy and paste it because actually that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, but just know, you're gonna have to download a whole lot. So I'm le legit just copy and pasting everything I have to download, hit enter, and it's gonna download the necessary packages. Now we have them download installed. And in addition, if you're running a 64-bit system, there's a few more packages which you're going to have to download. So once again, <laughs> they're on my webpage. Um, and just know I got these from the SageMod wiki page too. So if you want to go there and check them out, they're there as well. Here we go. And once again, just install those packages. So once you have those installed, you're ready to go on to step three. Okay, step three, making a few directories. So what we're gonna do is make two directories, first a bin directory, and a second directory to hold your SageMod source code. So you can do it through a GUI, obviously, or we can do it through a terminal, just by typing mkdir p, and then a little squiggly thing, bin, and that makes our bin directory, and we also wanna make a directory to hold a SageMod source, like I said. Now, I'm gonna call it cm10.2 just because i already have the source code downloaded and it's in a size mod 10.2 folder and that just makes it easier for me to show you but of course you can call it this directory wherever you want just note that i'm always going to refer to it as size mod 10.2 cm10.2 so 
CM10.2, but like I said, you can call it whatever you want and enter. All right, step four, installing the repo. So once again, it's gonna be another copy and paste scenario. So just do that. And like I said, I'm grabbing this right from my webpage and you can also find it on SideMod's wiki page. So we're gonna copy the, where we're gonna download the repo file from, paste it right here, enter. And then we're gonna change the permission just so it's executable. So the good old fashioned chmod and paste that right there and bam. All right, step five, initializing the SideMod source and downloading the source code. So first we wanna change the directory to our SideMod source folder that we wanna be in. So once again, for me, it's CM10.2, but for you, it might be something else. So CD, CM10.2. There we go. Now we need to initialize the repo file. Now this is where we go to GitHub and get the source code from whatever version of SideJamod we want. As you can probably assume, since I'm doing CM10.2, I'm going with SideJamod 10.2. However, if you want to go with 10.1, you can change it 10.1 or even 10.0 or 9.0, uh, etc. So I'm just going to copy and paste this repo line right here. And once again, if you want to change it to a different version of SideJamod, for example, 10.1, then you have 10.1, but I want 10.2, I'm gonna keep it like that, and then I'm gonna hit enter. And right here, it's gonna verify identity. If this is your first time using GitHub, uh, the repo on GitHub, you're probably gonna be asked to type in your email address and name, so just do that, um, you know, just to be safe and don't be alar alarmed. And also, make sure when it says repo has been initialized, make sure it says uh, home, your directory, and the size my source directory. First time I did this, I really wasn't paying attention and I found like over 20 gigs of source code in my home folder and that really wasn't fun to deal with. So make sure it's in the right directory. Then when you're ready, type in repo, sync, and hit enter. Now this will begin a very long process of downloading over 15 to 20 gigs of source code. And like I said, depending on your internet connection, this could take between four hours to four days. So just pause this video, come back in like a few hours and <laughs> see what happens. Okay, congratulations. You made it through like the hardest part of the tutorial, which is waiting through that long source code download. Now we're almost halfway done. So the next thing you need to do is get the pre-built apps. So navigate to your um, vendor SideMod folder. So what we're going to do is we're right now already in our SideMod folder. So, but we'll just do this. SideMod CD, excuse me, our folder to not to forward slash vendor slash cm. So just do whatever folder you have right here. Like I said, to not to go for the vendor and cm, enter. We're not folder. Now you want to type in period gets forward slash gets dash prebuilds. Enter. And we're going to get the prebuilt apps for the code. All right. Step seven, getting the device specific code. Now, to do this, what we want to do is navigate back to our SideMod CM10.2 folder. So CD, CM10, wow, can't type, 10.2. Okay, now what we do is type in source build env setup.sh and then type in Breakfast, ooh, breakfast, and your device name. So I'm using a Sprint HTC One. So my name's gonna be M7SPR. Uh, if you don't even know your device name, just do a quick Google search. You'll find out within like a few seconds. Um, but type in that in your device name and hit enter. And it's gonna look for the necessary files and download that. And as you see, I already did that. All right, step eight, extracting the Proprietary blobs or device specific files. Now, I like to show this using an existing zip file. If you really want to, you can connect your device and use ADB and pull the files that way. I think it's a little more complicated and makes life a little more difficult and I like making life easy. So let's just do it through a zip file. So as you can see right here, I had my already built SideMod uh, zip uh, file right here. And this is right from, I believe, SideMod's nightly build folder, possibly. I don't really remember, but I have that zip right there. So what we're going to do is we want to extract that and pull the device specific files from that. So first, let's make a directory called original. 
So CD, make sure in your home folder, and go MK dir. And then load squiggly thing. Uh original. Okay, now we have our original directory. <laughs> original directory. So what we're gonna do is extract the zip folder chat directory. I'm a big fan of GUI, so I'm just gonna use the GUI system to do it. Go to here we go, and where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Right there. Extract. And I retracted it, but I'm just gonna replace all. Okay, cool. So extracted our files. So now what we're gonna do is we want to navigate back to our SageMod source code folder and to our device name. So type in this. Change directory. Go to SageMod 10.2. Once again, name it to your appropriate folder. Device. HTC. Once again, if you're not using HTC phone, just replace it with appropriate folders um, correlating to your device. M7 SPR. Okay, now inside of there, type in the following. Dot extract forward slash original. Hit enter. And there we go. I just want to extract the uh, particular libraries and files from that zip that's pertaining to our device to a newly built size mod ROM. Okay, we are on the big step, starting the build. So what we want to do is type in the following. Croat. And then type in brunch. <laughs> These names. And your device model name. So for me, SPR. And once again, you want to use your device. Hit enter. And now it's going to start the build process of building a ROM. Depending on your computer hardware, this could take a while. Um, I, I, with my Core i7 and 16 gigs of RAM, it took maybe, I guess, maybe 45 minutes. So just sit back and give that time. All right. So hopefully you, you made through this without any build errors. And at the end, you should see something that says package complete. And it's such the location of your Sage mod zip. And as you can see, it's in your out target product and uh, device uh, name folder. So let's go to there. So we're going to open up the Explorer. Let's uh, go to that folder. Sage mod to that too. Out, target, product, and let's see, and it's build 818 right here, and there you have it. You officially have your own Sajamon built. So this is ready. You, right now, if you really want to, you can transfer this to your device and flash it. This is a full working ROM. Everything will work. You can take your device, you can flash it, and you'll have a working version of Sajamon. So, alright guys, so this has been how to build your own Sajid Mod ROM. I hope you enjoyed this. Hopefully you got some uh, good information out of this. Like I said, this is definitely, it's really not a hard process. It's actually fairly easy. It's just a long process. Um, and you just need to have patience, but it's really cool what you can do with this. And obviously, you can even customize in the future. You can customize what goes in here. You can change the apps. You can do whatever you want to do to this ROM um, when you build it and just have everything right in front of you and it's, it's kind of cool to be able to build your own ROM right from source and remember every so often to go back and do a repo sync to update the um, repository um, or your source code pretty much so it's always up to date and yeah so it's just really awesome and like I said this is compiled this whole tutorial is compiled from multiple different sources just bring them together so thanks for watching and stay tuned for some more galvanizing videos thanks <laughs>